I'm bringing you Crafters Inspiration brand new look issue number one where we are going to make this project here that isn't in the magazine using this box with this nicely decorated top. Some additional items that you will need is some white smooth stamping card that is 8 inches by 9 inches. You will need another piece of white smooth stamping card that is 7 inches by 8 inches. You will then need a piece of rose gold centure apparel. For this one, this one is 6 inches by 5 and 3 quarters. We'll need another little piece of rose gold centure apparel that is 2 and 3 quarters by 2 and a half inches. We will then need a piece of white smooth stamping card that is two and a half inches by two and a quarter inches. We're then going to bring in a piece of craft card that's two inches by four and three quarters. We're going to bring in a couple of little red gems that we've got here and we're going to bring in a hand tied bow, either one that you tie yourself or one that's shop bought. From our magazine, we're going to take a piece of the pattern snowflake paper that is four and three quarters by six inches. Same pattern paper, we're going to take two strips that are one inch by four and three quarters. Using still the same pattern paper, two strips that is one by five and three quarter inches. Then we're going in with this gorgeous poinsettia pattern paper, also from the magazine. This one, two strips that are one and a half inches by five and three quarters. We're going to use another two strips of the poinsettia pattern paper that is one and a half inches by four and three quarters. Then also from the poinsettia pattern paper, we're going to take a piece that is two inches by four and three quarters and we're going to have three that are that size here. Taken what will be our three strips that are two inches by four and three quarters, we're going to bring in our guillotine. Now we're going to cut from the top left corner right down to the bottom right hand corner. So if we line this up with our guillotine, so we can get it into position, corner to corner, and we can cut. We will then do that on the other two. So if I bring these two in and bring these two in, we will then have six triangles for our box. Using our Centura Pearl, where we've cut it to six inch by five and three quarters, I'm also going to bring in my score master. Now along the six inch side, we're going to pop that right up against the left hand side and then we are going to score at the one inch mark. So we're going to score. We're then going to turn it anti-clockwise, so our score line is along the bottom. We are then going to score at the two inch mark all the way down to our score line. Give that couple of scores. We're then going to score at four inch all the way down to our score line. Now what we can do is we can cut along our score lines right up to our score mark. So follow our score line all the way down and snip. We're going to repeat that once again. We are then going to cut down to our score line. And what we can do here is I'm going to lift this middle panel and where we come right into this bottom left hand corner, I'm going to pick up one line. I'm going to go to the four inch mark and we can then make sure this bottom corner is on the four inch mark and we can make sure our top left hand corner is also at the four inch mark. We can then score all the way down so score in a couple of times to make sure we've got a really deep score line. What we can then do is repeat that step again. So let's fold this last one and I'm still going to follow the four inch mark. And 
then there we go, we will have our panels that are cut and scored. To construct the box, we're going to take our white stamping card that is seven inches by eight inches, and we're going to bring in our scoreboard. We are going to pop this one up to the left hand side and we are going to score at two and a half centimetres all the way round. For the base of the box, we're going to take our white stamping card that is eight inches by nine inches and we're going to pop it up to the right hand side of our scoreboard. We're going to score at the four centimetre mark, four centimetre from the base. I find it easier to turn it around and score from the top. To assemble the box, we're now going to fold and burnish along all corners of the lid. And then bring in our scissors. So what we can do on one of the corners, we're going to snip up to the score line and we're going to cut a little V. We're going to do that on all four corners. We can repeat that step with our box lid. Add in our adhesive onto our strips and we're going to add these onto each of the panels all the way round the lid of our box. What we can then do, using our tape runner on all four corners, we're going to add some adhesive tape. So add in our tape onto each corner. Final corner with our adhesive. Now we can fold our tab over and bring corner to corner. Come with our adhesive and we can add strips of tape. We're going to attach these to each of the sides. To assemble our box base, we're going to add adhesive onto all four corners. Last one, bring in, in corner to corner, press to secure. We can then neaten that up, bring in our lid and there is our box base and lid all ready with its patterned paper. To construct the triple easel for the top of our box, we're going to bring in our panel. We can then fold over at a diagonal and we're going to burnish. We can do that once again on the second one. Fold and burnish. We can then repeat that for the third step. Fold and burnish. Then by bringing them in, opening them up, we can bring in all six of our panels. So we can also use our tape runner by adding our adhesive around the back, corner to corner. We can then pop up to the very top and we can position that one into place. Using our pattern paper from our snowflakes, we can then fold over. Down our score line, we're going to add some adhesive. So running our tape runner 
down the side. We can then nicely tuck our pattern paper up to our score line and press. We can then fold these back on themselves and press, always remembering to burnish at each step. Burnish, burnish, burnish. We are then going to turn it over the back and all the way round, we're going to add our tape runner, work our way round, including the centre, bringing back in our box that can sit nicely and snugly over the top. We can then press all of these areas in, nice, tight and secure, ready to decorate our box. Using our pine cone die that comes included within the magazine, we're going to pop that onto a piece of craft card. I'm going to use our midi and placing our pine cone onto our craft card, closing our folder. We're going to run that one through, reverse it. We can then move our midi back out the way. This will give us a very, very cute little pine cone and you would do that three times. Then you can come along with some gilding wax, some Renaissance gilding wax, and add a little piece to the base of our pine cone. Also, doing that on three of the pine cones. What we can then do is using some foam pads, we're going to place a foam pad behind each of our pine cones into the centre, roughly, and we can carry on decorating our box by positioning our pine cones into place. So if we start at the top, we're going to slightly tilt the top one. We're then going to peel the back. We can then position our pine cone to the right-hand side. This will create the stopper. We can repeat that step for the centre, bringing in a piece of our white smooth stamping card and the stamp sets that come included within the magazine. I have stamped out Merry and Bright using black ink pad. I'm then going to bring in our panel of rose gold by using our adhesive tape runner, adding our tape all the way around the back. We want to pop our adhesive in this bottom corner. So we're going to pop it into the bottom left hand corner. So we're going to add our tape all the way down into the corner. We can then bring it in and we can secure it up into this back panel. We can press it in. We're going to add some glue gel. We can then flatten all of these to start with. We're going to add our glue gel into the back. We can position it into the top left hand corner. Last remaining decoration from our gems. We can pick these ones up, secure them into place by popping one here. We can then bring in our medium one into place here. And last but not least, our final pearl into place. We can then position them back each angle and press secure. And there is our super cute, super fun box that was made using Crafters Inspiration, the brand new look issue number one.